G'day viewers, fellow gold refiners, gold lovers in general. Welcome back to my series of refining recovery without the use of nitric acid or with as little as possible used. I hope you are enjoying this series. Um, I'm trying to make as many as I can think of. Uh, in the comments, please leave me a uh, request if there's something that you want to see. I may already be in the process of making it or I may not have thought about it. Um, so let's carry on with another one from the series. Uh, G'day viewers, so this video will be about BGAs. Mostly RAM BGAs, but there are some bigger BGAs that were stuck on boards. Most of them are RAM BGAs. Um, you'll see in the video that I've got another tin in the fire, which has got the previous video, being the uh, gold corner BGAs. So uh, don't get too confused when you see it, because you'll know why. Alrighty, so I'll get these weighed up. Alright, so we'll see how easy I do this with one hand. I'll probably spill them everywhere. Yep. This container might not be big enough. I'll have to level it out a bit and then do the rest. Be right back. Okay. Should be a bit last of those in there now. There we go. So we've got 623 grams. Oh, it's a little bit over half a, half a kilo, but not quite three quarters of a kilo. So I'll go and put those in the fire. And we'll get, actually, no, these are both going to go into uh, HCL first and then into the fire. Now I've got this container here with hydrochloric acid in there and you'll see all this stuff floating around in there. That's because I've already used this hydrochloric acid for a pile of boards. So that's all the rubbish that's come off the boards. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna tip all these RAM BGA into here and let them soak. A bit of a shuffle. I'm just going to let them soak for a few hours, eat all that tin solder off, and then I'll rinse them and put them in a tin to burn. Okay, so these are the RAM BGOs. I've had them sitting in the hydrochloric acid longer than I planned because it's been so hot, I just left it there. and I've never seen this reaction before. They've kind of absorbed all the hydrochloric acid and all that dark matter is just, it's just gone like a syrup. I've never seen this before. I had planned on rinsing these off to get the tin and everything away from it and to reuse the hydrochloric acid. Well, that's not going to be happening. So I will rinse these, but I can't use the hydrochloric acid again. So I'm going to have to get the hose and just um, put water in there, rinse it all off and save the BGAs and uh, I'm hoping it hasn't affected them, I can't see how it would have but never ever seen that before so anyway I'll rinse those off now and we'll gather them up and ready to burn as you can see they're nicely rinsed off so now I'll just gather them up put them in a tin and I'm going to wait for a cool day which is coming up soon to uh, burn them okay so all the RAM BGA are burnt and I'm about to put them in my dolly pot break them up you'll find in some of these things here there's like uh, boards so what it is is cell phone boards smartphones that have got chips on them and I can't be bothered 
heating up the board just to remove a few chips when they're smothered all over it. Um, plus some of the boards had gold on them as well. So I just burn them all, burn it as it is. This is actually a piece of copper from a big chip that was in there, a rather large chip. But there are some boards in there somewhere that have, uh, like this one here, that's a piece of board, I think, and uh, it's also a large chip. I had some pretty big chips in there, but there's, there's boards in there anyway. They're probably all broken up to nothing now, that's probably why I can't find them. There was about three bits of board that I put in there, but uh, it's all going to get processed the same, so it will get smashed up and separated into a fine dust into here. So, I only do a small bit at a time. Looks like I'm gonna need my hand, other hand here to make sure it doesn't fall out. But I'll come back. Okay, so I've got a small amount in there. I don't wanna do, don't wanna do too much at once, otherwise what's on the bottom doesn't get crushed. Now I'm gonna smash that up with the truck axle like so and then I'll get my kitchen sieve and strain it all get the dust out separate the large bits and I'll do that now it's been to the dolly pot smashed it up as best I can and I'm just going to sieve out all the dust as you can see separate anything that's large like those bits of copper copper plate make sure there's nothing stuck to it and that will go in my stock pot it's another piece of copper nothing stuck on that so I'll keep doing that and once that's done I'm not going to show you the whole procedure it'll take a, a while I'm going to go through all that so I'll get everything done ready to uh, separate gravity separation and I'll come back I'm separating out the copper as I go, mainly because that will just absorb a whole pile of chemicals, needlessly dissolving. But I'm also making sure there's no gold. You see these ones here have gold on them. So those ones I don't separate. That'll go in with the large coarse stuff that gets um, processed. Some of them are making sure 100% that it's just copper before I take it apart. You see the gold on that? It's not focusing very well. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, I can see it well. So I'm just really making sure that only what I take out is pure copper. Because chemicals are expensive. There's no need to needlessly use it up dissolving copper. You see that one looks like it's still got a chip on there in the middle, so I'm keeping that one in there. This one here looks like it's just copper. So I'm going to thoroughly wipe it down, make sure anything that's loose comes off. And once I'm sure that it's only copper, I'll go aside. Now, if there is any gold on those that I've missed, I won't be losing it because that all goes in my stock pot the copper will dissolve in the stock pot and the gold will be left behind. Alright, so I'm going to carry on doing that. It's going to take me quite a while with all these chips that seem to have a lot of copper in there. But it's what I feel is necessary because I don't like wasting kind of acids. So I'll get back to it. All the coarse sediment that's uh, not going through the strainer I'm putting into this container here and then I'll put it in a beaker, I just haven't got a clean beaker at the moment. You can see there's still a lot of copper in there, tiny, tiny bits, um, but they're gonna have gold with it. So there will be some copper going into the solution. I just wanna minimize how much I waste to dissolve them for no reason. So, uh, if I'm not 100% sure that there's nothing else on there but copper, it goes in here. Only when I'm dead sure that there's only copper, like this piece, still got a bit of gold on the end of it. I can see a little bit hanging off the end here. 
I don't know if that's going to show up or not. You see the gold on there? So I'm going to leave all that in there. Look at that piece down there. Nice. So I'm going to have three piles. I'm going to have the definite copper, the mixed copper and gold, and the fine sediment which is going into here. Okay, so I'm left with the two piles. One is all the ash, which I'm about to gravity separate, and all the coarse. Now, there was a lot of big pieces of copper that had looked like gold on it. I didn't want to take any chances, so I've just left it in there. There's a lot of copper in there. And in my best effort of singling out copper, I've still left a lot behind and it's going to take a lot of solution. The thing is, even though I'm trying to save on acid, I also don't like cutting corners. The people out there who don't have any patience and they don't like to get it all done quickly, you want, that's where you run into problems. Now, I could just dissolve everything into AR, but I would have one hell of a dirty mess. I would have a solution that's full of all kinds of things, from copper, silver, gold, who knows what else and it just makes life really really hard I like to work with the cleanest solutions I can even if it means taking more steps to get it done and then I know that what's coming out is purely gold because the solution's so clean all the base metals have already been removed the silver's already been removed um, and I know that with these videos I'm trying to do them without nitric acid well, this is going to have to be soaked in nitric acid. There's no way around it. Once I've got all the base metals dissolved and the silver dissolved, I will then be able to dissolve the gold in aqua regia without using nitric. I'll be able to use bleach. But at this stage, I'm going to have to use nitric acid. So what will happen is the copper will dissolve, the silver will dissolve, and all, all that will be left behind is gold with you know, the, the debris, the circuit dies and the bits of boards and whatever else will be there. But no other metals should be left in there once I'm finished dissolving them all. So I'm going to use as minimal amount as nitric acid as I can. And I'll still process the gold without nitric. But I'm going to go wash a beaker now, put this in it and start the process of dissolving all this. And then I'll start separating that with gravity separation, I'll show you that in a minute. Although I've just posted a video about it, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. And then once I've separated the ash, that can go into a beaker and also be processed. That will also need a nitric bath to remove any small fragments of silver and copper in there. But again, once I've removed all those base metals, the silver and the copper will be separated from the gold and I'll be able to process the gold using bleach. I hope this is helpful to some of you. I'm trying as much as I can to show you how to do things without nitric but there are some things that just got to be and especially for the newbies out there I don't recommend cutting corners. The longer you take to do something the more steps involved in doing it the, the purer the cleaner the gold will be the cleaner the solution will be and much easier to work with and less problems. I've poured out any of the tap water that was in there with the BGAs and I'm going to give it a couple of rinses with distilled water and then when I squirt all this out of the bucket I'll be using distilled water because you want to get rid of the chlorine the tap water would make the silver go to silver um, chloride and I don't want that so I'm going to remove all the tap water and just have distilled water in there and put it in the beaker with distilled water. Alright, so the rough sediment is in the beaker, distilled water and nitric acid. As you can see, it's burning up all those base metals. When the reaction stops, I add a bit more nitric and a bit more nitric and a bit more nitric until there's no more reaction. I don't even have it on heat yet. There's just so much copper in there, it's reacted straight away. When the reaction slows down, I'll apply some heat, which will help 
Yes, it works better with heat. As you would have seen in my gold corner BGO video, this is the most crucial point. You've got to really rinse this well and get all the nitric acid out because the nitric acid has contaminants like copper and silver. If you don't rinse it well enough, when you dissolve the gold, all those contaminants will be in the gold. The more you rinse it now, the cleaner you get this, uh, this sediment, then the purer the gold will be when you dissolve it. So it's vital that you rinse it over and over and over until it's clean. I've grabbed the filter along with some of the chips that went in there for the BGAs and I've put them back in the, in the beaker and I've made some rural poor man's aquarigia which is hydrochloric acid and bleach. Put it on a low heat, there's no reaction yet because I've only just done it and uh, if I need more bleach as time goes on I'll put some more in to dissolve the gold. Alright, so this is going to give you a good example of why rinsing prior to starting aquarigia is so important. These are the BGAs, the RAM BGAs, and look how dirty the solution is. If I had rinsed that properly, it wouldn't be like that. Now right next to it, and at the same stage, is gold corner BGAs. Look how nice and orange it is. So that one I rinsed properly, and this one I didn't. I've been adding more bleach and as you can see there's still a reaction so just a matter of keep adding it until there's no more reaction I've got to head out for a while so I'm going to turn it off um, and then I'll resume later on when I get home I'll turn it back on again I'm filtering the RAM BGA mix and I'm using a lab filter which is good because it's stopping all the dark and it's uh, only letting out the nice gold solution so that's going to save me a lot of time and a lot of hassle because a lot of the impurities will stay in the filter it'll still be dirty gold but it'll be a much cleaner drop I know this this flask is dirty but I'm only using that as a vessel for the for, for the funnel I'll pour it into a, a beaker once I've uh, ran all this through so I'm getting there and we're on now the last of the BGOs have been filtered through so now I'm going to put the solution into a beaker ready to drop however I've run out of SMB so I need to mix up some ferrous sulfate so I'll put that in the beaker now and then I'll go and start some ferrous sulfate Okay, so I've got this 20 kilo bag of ferrous sulfate. Uh, some of you probably know it as copper as. This is a different bag to what you would see in America. It's far cheaper for me to use this than SMB. I pay $19 for 5 kilos of SMB. I pay $19 for 20 kilos of this ferrous sulfate so it's less than a dollar a kilo now there's no exact amount that you would need I think it's something like four four or five grams of this per gram of gold you expect but I just I just use a cupful or at least half a cup I mean it's so cheap and it doesn't matter if I use excess so I know that I'm gonna get all the gold out so I'm gonna put some in this cup and then put that into the speaker and dissolve it and filter it because you've got to filter it there's iron filings and all sorts of rubbish in there that you don't want so I'll fill the cup up now I'll put some in the beaker and go and dissolve it okay so you don't have to use hot water but I just find that it dissolves a lot easier give a good stir a lot of my ferrous sulfate is baked hard I don't know why maybe oxygen got to it or something I probably should keep it in an airtight container but I don't have an airtight container big enough it eventually dissolves 
I just give it a good stir once it's all dissolved and then I start filtering it. I don't need a lab filter for it, just a normal coffee filter will do. So I'll keep going with that. Okay, I've got a beaker set up here with a filter on it. I'm going to start filtering it. Now what I've realised from past error is not to leave this sitting like that because a lot of the things inside that haven't dissolved like the iron filings and all the other rubbish will bake hard in the bottom of the beaker and it's near impossible to get out so while I'm waiting for it to filter I've got to keep stirring it not not constantly but every so often just give it a bit of a stir otherwise in half an hour or so there'll be a rock solid pile at the bottom maybe this doesn't happen to everyone maybe it only because I use so much I don't know but that's just what I do so now I'll start filtering it and I'll be back when it's all done. I've almost got it all filtered through. Um, there's only a little bit left in the, the funnel. And once that's run through, I'll tip that into here. And then um, probably end up having to put it back in there so I can add HCL to this because it has to uh, have a, a H, H, HCL in there to go green before I can add it to the, the gold solution. All right, so it's time to put some HCL in. The solution should go green. Don't panic too much if it doesn't. It'll still work. It's going greenish. I may need to put some more, but I don't have enough room. So I'll pour this in and then I'll add a bit more HCL in a minute. Let's add a little bit more HCL to this. So I'll rinse this out. It does work without it going green, even though the book of CMM hoax refining precious metals says to do it. I have uh, used it without putting HCL in, but I've got it for one. Now I don't know if boiling this speeds up the reaction and the settling like it does with uh, SMB. So I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to try it and see what happens. So I'm going to put it up on the heat and put it up high and try boiling it, see if that speeds up the settle, it makes the gold settle quicker or not, it might not work. But this is how you learn by trying things, it won't do any harm that's for sure. So now it's just a time thing to wait and see what happens. Boiling didn't seem to make any difference, so just going to let it sit. Um, so that's the coarse BGA sediment sorted out now it's time to do the fine sediment which i've got sitting in here so i'll put that into a beaker now and start this one i poured off all the solution from the the coarse bgas and the lighting is not very good out here tonight and i'm pretty sure some of the gold has gone into my flask so i'm in the process of filtering it to recover any gold that I may have gone across but what I did catch I've put in this little beaker should be quite a, a nice little hole there once that settles and I can pour off a bit more liquid plus whatever I catch in here from filtering what's in the flask now that it's daylight I was able to find the tiny remnants of gold left in this flask there's not really much in there at all just you can see around the rim there the dark line around the rim so I had dried the gold in the beaker but I'm going to add that liquid to it and then let it settle and pour off the liquid a bit easier from, from this than it is from that vessel 
then it means I haven't lost any of the gold and there's no need to filter it. So I'll do that now. Right. So I've poured it in there, it's pretty dark liquid. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this up with water, it's going to dilute that colour a fair bit. And then I'll be a lot, a lot easier to see, I'm going to be able to pour off the liquid and see the gold much easier than I can in this dark liquid. So I'll fill that up and let it settle. Alright, so the gold from the coarse debris from the um, VGAs is dry. So I'm going to tip this into my gold. Still, there's always a little bit you can't get off. 1.46 grams. And when I do the the finer debris, which is on hot plate now, I'll, um, I'll add that to it. So what I'm going to do, I don't normally like doing two-part videos, but it's going to probably take up to a week to finish the next one. If life doesn't get in the way, it'd be quicker. So this will be the end of part one, and I'll do the fine debris and make that part two. So for now, um, hope you've enjoyed it so far. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, all that, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.